Hey kids, welcome to lesson 14, building an app, image scroller, adding image URLs. We're ready to start improving the My Favorite Things app from our last lesson. We're gonna do this in two steps. First, we will change it from scrolling text to scrolling images. And second, we will add key events to scroll with the keyboard. Step one, the default values in your array should be image URLs. The large text area needs to be changed to an image. Instead of setting the text, you will now be using the set image URL to set the URL of the image. When we're talking about the giant text area, we're just talking about this area right here. Do this. We've reloaded the code from the My Favorite Things app you wrote in a previous lesson. If you want to refer to the code you just wrote, you can go back to look at it. Set the default values in your array to be image URLs. You might need to take a minute to go collect a few if you don't have any prepared for this lesson. Don't worry, kids. I have three of the most adorable puppy images you will ever see. In design mode, delete the text area and replace it with an image. Make sure your image has a descriptive and meaningful ID. As we always do, I am sure we will do again. Inside your function that updates the display, replace set text with set image URL. Make sure you reference your new in image elements by its correct ID. Test your app to confirm it's now showing the images in your array. Woo! That is a lot to do, but not too bad. The first thing we need to do really is to go to these large text area and change it to an image. I'm gonna to flip to design mode here and I'm just going to delete my text area. I am then going to put in an image. This image, we are going to scale to our screen because we want it to fill up our screen here, just like the text area. And let's just get it so we're not hitting our remove button there. That looks pretty good. We can center this if we would like to. Remember, it's 320 pixels wide. This box right here is 300. That means the X position should be 10. And that's where we're at. We're going to contain the image completely in. Last thing we need to do is just give this a meaningful and descriptive ID. I am just going to put scroll image right there. That looks a little weird because my L's and I's look identical. Hopefully I remember this moving forward, but you never know. That takes care of our text area. How are we gonna get stuff in there though? Let's go back to our code and take a look at it. Before we get started, let's take a look at our code to refresh our memory. I have a variable favorite things. My bucket is empty. I am adding items. My first favorite thing is my car, my Chevy Volt. Second is video games. And third is pizza. The current index is set to zero. Remember, arrays index zero to nine, but we count one through 10. So that's gonna come up here in a minute. We have a call to a function update display. Our next button says, hey, on the event you click something, you're gonna add one to the current index. If the current index is the same length as the list, you're gonna reset it to zero, then update this display. On previous, very similar. This one says if the current index is less than zero, you're gonna set the index back to the length of the list. How do we get the length of the list? Remember back to the previous lesson, we just do a dot length minus one. Since lists are numbered one through 10, but arrays are zero through nine, we subtract one to make sure they are on the same page. We have an add button here. Whenever the user clicks on it, what it's doing is creating a new variable called new item. We're getting the text from the input area from the user. If the new item is not equal to blank, then we can add text. Otherwise, we do nothing. And we're going to append this item to fave things. Why do we use append? Because it adds it to the end. After that, we update our display. We have our set text function here. All this does is update the display. 
It's saying, hey, set the text of the old text area to whatever your favorite thing is in the current index. You're also going to set the array tracker, that's my one of whatever, to the current index plus one. Remember, because indexes start at zero. And we do the length of the list up there. So if we add stuff, it constantly adds to it. We don't have to worry about hard coding it in. I think this area is where we're going to have to update for our URL images, or if you look back up here to number three here in step one. Our remove button here says if favorite thing list length is greater than zero, you can remove items. But if the current index is less than zero, then you're going to set it back down to zero. Then we update the display. If nothing is in my array, then we come down to my else. And what we're basically doing is taking away that else. We have a rogue function here. I don't know how you got there, my little friend, but we don't need you, so we are going to delete you. We are still getting there. Why are we still getting there? When I deleted my function, I by accidentally deleted a little brace that I need, so I need to add a little curly Q brace there. What this brace is doing is closing my else function and then wrapping my if function in it. The final one is the large on event handler. Well, that's what my code does. How do we change it now? I think the first thing I'm going to have to do is actually to get images in there to call. We're not using text anymore. That means I'm going to take where it says Chevy Volt or whatever this is, and I'm going to add the URL of my image. Up here, I have three images. First, oh, look at that cute puppy. Second, oh, look at him sleeping, how cute that is. Notice the first two are the same size. I also want to test with a giant image to see what happens. And this is my third giant image. Look how cute that puppy is when he sleeps. Have you never seen something so cute in your life? Oh. I am just going to copy the URLs here. Copy the first one. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to go to my Chevy Volt. And I'm going to replace that with my imager link there. I'm going to rinse and repeat for the next two images. And the third one, my large one, look how cute that is, right here. What this means is I want to add an item into favorite things array. What do I want to add? Well, I want to add this image here. All that does is place an image into there. We haven't called it, we haven't displayed it, or done anything to it. We are now going to work on this third little part here. We are now, instead of setting the text, we are going to set image URL. And if you look down here, this is an example of exactly what we have to do. We are pretty much taking away the set text and we're replacing it with a new set image URL. Let's go find my update display function. It is all the way, no, nope, not all the way at the bottom. It is right there, almost at the bottom, right in the middle there. What are we gonna take out here? We can't take out both of them. Remember, one deals with my tracker there, and I absolutely need that one. Let's go ahead and just delete the set text for the text area there. How do we put that in there? Let's drag our set image over. You can see the first one is an ID. The second is a URL. What ID do I want? Well, I want this area here, so I need to set the ID to scroll image. The next part is the URL. I don't want to hard code this in and have to write every single one of them as I go, because that honestly is a giant headache. What we did for the text was we pretty much did get text. We put the text area, we want to put the text. And if you remember, we called to the current index of the array. 
So I'm going to write my array that I have my things in, fave thing. I'm going to put a bracket right there. And I'm going to call whatever my current index is. That means instead of setting a text area, we're now setting an image area. And it should be whatever the current index is. Ooh, sounds like a lot. I don't know if I'm right. So let's test our hypothesis. When I hit run, I should get one adorable puppy into my box right here. Let's hit run. We don't get anything. Nothing. Nothing. Hmm. Why is that? Let's go up here and take a look at our items here. So why isn't it displaying here? Let's take a look at our image. Currently, it's pointing towards a page. So if I take this right here and I just copy this whole image and I come over here, open a new browser up, paste it, you will see it actually goes to a page, not an image. We have to open an image in a new tab and you'll notice that my image URL should have a .jpg, .png, some sort of file format. Image extensions do matter. Remember, PNG is always the best. JPEG is our second choice, but both of these will work. Point here is we need to actually point to an image, not a page. It can't find the image on a page. We have to point exactly to where it goes. Let's copy this URL here. Let's go back here, delete this one, paste in that new URL, reset run, and look at that cute little puppy there. I am going to rinse and repeat for the next two. Take this one and my third one here. Ooh, looks like I didn't delete before I pasted. Delete that, paste that one in. And my gigantic one, open in a new tab, copy that image, come back over here and then paste it in. Now when I hit reset run, I should be able to scroll through the images and see my images there. I am very interested to see if it resizes it for us. Let's go ahead and see. Reset run. First little cute doggy. Next one. Oh, look how cute he is. And the third one, let's see if this overwhelms the screen. Nope. Took a little longer to load, but other than that, it loaded up perfect. Look at that cute puppy sleep. I think that fulfills the requirements of the project. Looking back up here, we are taking care of step one, changing it from scrolling text to a scrolling image. Today, we change the default values in our array to URLs. We deleted the large text area here and changed it to an image. And instead of setting the text, what we did was set the image URL instead. I think that takes care of everything we had to do for this lesson. And the next one, we're going to add the ability to do keyboard scrolling, which sounds like a lot of fun. I don't think code.org wants anything else from us. Let's see if they do. Nope. Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.